Good evening, folks. It's Freddie Vasquez. This is Basement Politics on Filter. Happy Monday. It's late night. Coming on real quick to discuss the mayor's new podcast. Have you seen me? One night. Good evening, folks. I'm Freddie Vasquez. Tonight, uh, I wanted to uh, go over really quick. I haven't been on in a couple of days. I just decided to take a break. Sometimes you need a break, spend time with the family. Although I do that a lot, actually. Don't want to make it seem like I don't. But I just want to take a break, and I'm back. Uh, I wanted to go over the mayor's um, has a podcast now. The mayor um, has a new podcast. It's called Unmiked. I don't know if you guys have seen this. If you haven't, you'll see it with me here. Uh, he discusses Hollywood under Hudson. That's episode one. It's all about uh, studios, you know, Lionsgate, um, and all, and how that came about, right? And it's interesting because um, he discusses uh, how the uh, governor came to him with this idea, actually, about making Yonkers or turning Yonkers into, um, you know, Hollywood and the Hudson, basically, you know, um, bringing the movie studios here. So, you know, that's something I didn't know. And it's just like Spano's idea, right? Or someone else here in Yonkers. But Albany came down to the mayor and said, hey, you know, the big wigs, the movie studio guys, the people with the money, they want to, uh, you know, build studios here in New York. They're looking for an East Coast version of Hollywood. And so we thought Yonkers would be great, you know. And so that's how it, uh, I, I guess, it materialized. And it's interesting that he, uh, you know, he says that here, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll play it here in a second, uh, because I had a conversation once with a gentleman you may be familiar with this guy. His name is Richard Thomas. He was the uh, former mayor of Mount Vernon. One time he was the mayor, had some some troubles there, pled guilty to some things there, some mismanagement of campaign funds or whatever. But in his plea deal, um, you know, he didn't do any jail time or anything like that. And he was also allowed to um, run for office again, which he is. He's running for mayor again uh, in Mount Vernon against the uh, incumbent, Sean Howard. And um I spoke with him. He was supposed to come on my podcast, never did. But, um, you know, I've learned that people use my use me as leverage. They use Freddie Vasquez as leverage. And he did. And I think that uh, he got to go on Ruro's show, you know, as a result. And Ruro couldn't have him come on my show first. Right. So that was his goal. And so he got on there. But before he did, he spoke to me about how he um, was very instrumental in the development that's going on here in the um, in downtown area in Yonkers. And I thought, I, you know, that was surprising to me because I said, oh, really, you know, I didn't think you had anything to do with Yonkers. I know you were former mayor of Mount Vernon, but he worked up in Albany with the governor uh, at one point. Um, governor Patterson, I believe it was, the gentleman that was blind. Um, and so I guess this idea and all this development was, um, you know, being talked about up in Albany, even going far back as then. And so I guess Mike Spano happens to be the mayor that's playing ball, right, with Albany. I think that's where it's starting to appear. He's willing to play ball. And um, and I also posted some old videos uh, from, um, you know, the mayor about 10 years ago, Mayor Chuck Lesnick and stuff. And they're talking about some developments and stuff. And so you hear you can see some of the other developers that were around that are no longer around. Um, and uh, it's just interesting because, you know, it's good to know history, right? You start to see. You get a better picture of what's going on here. So he, this apparently was, you know, Albany's idea, the governor and that materialized up there. And maybe Richard Thomas, the former mayor of Mount Vernon, actually did have something to do with that. You know, I wasn't sure. I didn't know if he was just saying that to take some kind of credit. But, you know, I didn't have no reason to not believe him either. But, uh, yeah, he said he was a big part of that. So, um, yeah, maybe he, they probably was a big part of that. And not, uh, you know, as we think, it's all Mayor Despano and he has to finish it. This is the uh, Mike Spano podcast. And by the Hello, way, Hello, Yonkers. Come this on first mind, episode guess... is named Hollywood on the Hudson, Stars in Schools. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful to have the viewers in City Hall, especially in the mayor's office. So, Mayor, when you first took office back in 2012, you had this vision of transforming Yonkers into a premier film destination, <clears throat> one that would rival the likes of LA and New York City. In an interview with Westchester Magazine, you coined the phrase Hollywood on the Hudson, and it stuck. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about your initial thoughts when Lions get approached you? You know, it was very, very interesting that the whole, this whole thing and how it all came about. Uh, so 
um, here we are, take office. Uh, the governor's film office came down to visit. And they said, you know, um, you really, what they suggested to me was, you really should have more of this industry in Yonkers. Um, you have all that is needed. You're, you're less than 20 miles out of Columbus Circle, which is uh, the, the kind of like the, the center of where they will, where that industry needs to be in New York City. Uh, you're just outside New York City, so their costs are lower um, and, and you have uh, easier access. And so you have all the ingredients that a community would need if you wanted to have the film industry in your city. Um, but, you know, Last year, 2011, you only uh, filmed three days in the city of Yonkers. Imagine three days, and uh, and I so I asked why, and they they gave me a list of reasons. Um, one, uh, Yonkers had a, a stage tax. I think it was twelve hundred dollars, and it was a stage tax that no one in the industry had to pay anywhere else but in Yonkers, New York. Uh, they had um, a, a number of, of requirements that were forced upon them by local labor leaders, by local labor groups that would, would show up on site and say, okay, you need to hire this group, you need to hire this group, you need to hire this group. Again, adding to the cost, also creating a burden and, and becoming almost like a menace. And so, uh, so the industry... Uh, when I say the industry, I mean the film industry, really wasn't excited about coming to Yonkers. And so they would go elsewhere because they didn't have to pay those pesky taxes. They didn't have to, um, they didn't have to um, deal with some of the other rules and some of the other people that would come their way, which would, at the end, they would cost them a lot of money. So we did a couple of things um, because we wanted to bring more of the industry here, right? I would love to tell you that, you know, our goal was to get Lionsgate here, but that wasn't what we were talking about, not back then. Back then we were talking about how can we get more of this industry into Yonkers? And so we eliminated that tax. Um, we put a, a film office in effect in the city and the industry and their leaders could only deal with one person. That one person was a part of this administration. And that one person would facilitate the permits. That one person would also facilitate the needs. So if they were doing pyrotechnical, uh, they would they would uh, facilitate having a fire watch and having firefighters there. If they were needed uh, crowd control, uh, then they would facilitate police officers. They needed to have the streets cleaned after a set. They facilitate having uh, you know a public works there, but only if they were needed. So again, it didn't add a burden, money, it didn't add yeah. a cost. And so we were able to get, um, we were able to get those changes made. And it was really interesting. It, it literally turned around in a year. All of a sudden we went from having three days to having hundreds of days really? of people filming movies, uh, in, in this city, you know? I, I wow. So anyway, he says that, um, you know, he was um, approached by the uh, governor's film, I guess, uh, film division or department or whatever that deals with filming here in the, new, in the state of New York, um, you know, and they wanted to bring a film industry here to the state and Yonkers was perfect because it's 20 minutes from Columbus Circle in Manhattan, which is, I guess, the center uh, point for, you know, the movie industry here in New York. And so it, you know, he, they thought it great. He would thought it was great. And, you know, they said that, you know, last the year before he got into office, which is 2011, that they didn't really do many much filming here in Yonkers. They were, he said about three days of filming and he asked why, why was it so low? And how could we improve that and get more filming here? And uh, the first reason he stated was a stage tax of $1,200. So, you know, the movie industry, they wouldn't film here because of a $1,200 stage tax. I mean, that's 
chump change, I would think, right? I don't know. But the thing that really kind of, um, you know, was uh, a sh- a surprising that he said to me anyway, was the local labor leaders and how he described them. You know, he said, uh, you know, they added to the cost so they didn't want to have to deal with local labor. But these are our guys, right? These are our women. Aren't we supposed to fight for them to get jobs? Uh, he said they became a burden. The local labor, the union guys and girls became a burden, almost like a menace, he says almost like a menace. And so, uh, you know, he got rid of that. You know, they didn't have to deal with that. That's what he did. So he eliminated that $1,200 stage tax that they didn't want to pay, right? And then he got a central person, right? This is how he addressed the problem when he got into office. You know, got rid of that pesky tax, you know, the stage tax. He also, you know, I guess somehow got rid of the the labor guys from bothering the movie people, you know, and having to do any work because they were a menace and a burden. And then he also created this position within his administration, with, you know, for a person to be the central point of contact, right? And this person would be in charge of getting permits um, and facilitating whatever the needs were of, you know, whatever uh, studio, whatever company was filming here in the city of Yonkers, you know, from having firefighters present, police present for crowd control, uh, you know, maybe EMS and stuff, whatever it is, DPW to clean streets up, but only if they were needed. So it didn't add to the cost because it was only if they were needed. Right. And that person, I believe, is Melissa Goldberg, um, who does that. And I think that's what her position is, like the film liaison. And I kind of wondered what that was all about. So now I think I know. And so, yes, Melissa Goldberg, she is, um, you know, the daughter in law of Carmen Gomez Goldberg, who, um, you know, she's um, does something over with the charter school. She's uh, instrumental in getting that um, charter school going over there on Warburton, the uh, charter school of excellence. Uh, so she's in charge of that, Melissa Goldberg. And so he said, as a result of that, filming went from like three days to hundreds of days of filming here in the city of Yonkers. And someone had a question with that I thought was interesting. Uh, how much money has the city of Yonkers made, you know, um, in the past, let's say, I don't know, 12 years since he's been mayor of the city of Yonkers, since he got so much more filming done here, uh, you know, was able to get more companies to come film here. How much money has the city generated and where has that money actually been allocated to? Like, where has it, does it go? And w- what does it, you know, do for the city? Right. So, you know, it, it's great. I guess it does generate revenue, but how much and where is it going? That's what we should know. And is there somewhere we could find that? Maybe someone out there can look that up and, and find it. I'll try and look it up. Maybe you already know where it's at and you can, you know, show me uh, or send me the link. I'd love to uh, know that. Uh, there is a woman that worked on the Spencer and Emma Cohn that did the same function. Oh, really? So it, it, if you know maybe a little bit about that, why why do you think that um uh, there was less filming then? Right. Uh, You know, he was saying that before he became mayor, there were maybe about three days of filming. And then after he became mayor and he, you know, kind of changed this all around, there was now hundreds of days of filming. Right. And I don't uh, you know, the the stage tax of twelve hundred dollars, you know, that's strange that movie uh, industry, uh, they wouldn't film because of a twelve hundred dollars. I mean, we're talking about millions of dollars they're spending here to produce, uh, you know, television show or movie. And they're going to, you know, really make a big deal of twelve hundred bucks. Right. And so, uh, you know, and the labor guys, I, you know, isn't that the point of, you know, w- what you do as a as the mayor of a city representing people? You want to get the people of that city jobs. Right. So if they're going to come here, yeah, you got to give our you know our people jobs. And, you know, he talks about that. that that's one of the great things about this movie industry coming into Yonkers is that it's going to provide jobs. But here it made it seem like the local labor guys were pesky. They, I mean, they were a burden. They were a menace almost. And so, you know, we couldn't have them getting the jobs. Yonkers streets need to be more clean. Yeah, depending where you're at, especially. That's true. Uh, so let's see what else he has to say. It's amazing. I, uh, I didn't know that. And by the way, does anybody know who this guy is, the interviewer? I've seen her around uh, the city, uh, city hall. And, you know, I'm like, who's this guy? You know, he obviously was, would walk around like he, you know, he has access to everything. So anyone know who he is? The taxes. And it's it's interesting to me that you were able to do that. Can you talk a little bit about the process? Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, it's sometimes it's not that they can't afford the tax. Right. Right. Um, but we want the jobs. We want the revenues. We know that there are great revenues associated with bringing the, this industry to us than we would get on a stage tax, sure. um, but but the stage tax was enough 
for um, Lionsgate and, and all the different companies that film movies, it was enough for them to say, ah, you know what? Nobody else charges that. We're not paying that. And we don't, we, we're not going to go. And so we, we needed to ch change it. And we were able to get the lobby to council at the time. And the council changed some of the local laws that allowed us to make those changes. And that uh, gave us the ability um, to be more attractive. Um, that being more attractive, like I said, word spread real fast. Word spreads very, very quickly, I've noticed, in this industry. Right. Like, like almost instantaneously. And, uh, and you know, the, the industry looked at Yonkers and said, wow, here's an, here is the city of Yonkers uh, from, uh, it's culturally diverse. It is um, diverse economically. Uh, it has a, a mixture of urban and suburban settings all right here in this kind of like this little 18 square mile bubble. And, and it's less than 20 minutes out of Columbus circle. And they came in droves and they wanted to, uh, they, they wanted to be here. Now, you know, when, when a film set comes to Yonkers uh, and, they, and they're filming here in this city, are, you know, employing local people um, there, they're, they have local carpenters coming in. They have people coming in uh, to, uh, to help set up the set. They have uh, they hire some of our local labor. They they deal with our local restaurants. So uh, at, we kind of like having them here. Right. So this was this was the beginning of what eventually led us, and we could talk about that you know more, more, you know more. But that's that was the, we. To use the pun, we set the stage for what eventually became a uh, a huge. So you say he set the stage by removing the stage tax because that was just enough twelve hundred dollars to keep companies from filming here in Yonkers. So he removed that, and that did it. That got them to come here. And you know, he says that they love Yonkers. Uh, you know, is culturally diverse. Yeah, you know, it's economically diverse. You know, I. I don't know about that. It's becoming more and more either you got money or you don't. You're rich or you're poor. That's what it's becoming. Uh, he said it's a mixture of urban and suburban. Uh, that's true. Although if they have it their way and they change the zones, you know, the the family, the single family zoning law thing, everywhere you're going to see buildings going up. So you're just going to see a bunch of, uh, you know, nothing but urban area and Yonkers and everywhere. Be I don't know if you guys heard about that. James Nolan wrote a letter against it. They wanting to be able to uh, change the uh, zone families areas that are zoned for single families and allow them to uh, make, you know, change the zone to do other things like other buildings, um, whatever else, mixed use developments. They want to do these things everywhere. So that's why I was warning you folks on the east side, all you folks that live in those single family zoned areas, you know, brace yourselves. Uh, you know, if that happens, they're going to start building uh, big buildings near you guys. So it's going to produce more density. You know, your peaceful suburban area is going to be disrupted. Um, so, you know, he says uh, that it's great. We love having the movie studios here because, or the movie was one really, and I don't know how much work they're doing, but we love having the people film here because it's great for the local people and jobs. But that's just, that's words. That's not true. That's just words. Who Who's being employed? Who Who are the people here in the city of Yonkers that are being employed? that didn't live here before they were employed, right? Because now you have people that are moving here that live here now. Yeah, they may be employed, but they were not living here prior to being employed or they moved here because of their employment with Lionsgate or with any other production company that may be in the area, right? So they're not hiring people that lived in Yonkers for the past 10, 15 years. That's not the case, right? And then he also talks about it's great for local labor, but he was just saying that they had an issue with local labor. And one of the reasons they wouldn't come Right. They were a burden. They were a menace. But now he says it's great for local labor, although we know that they haven't been getting job. Local labor has been, you know, had had issues, although they've been kind of quiet. And usually when that happens, we know it's because, you know, 
they made some deals somewhere and so they're staying quiet but yeah that was a big issue uh you know teamsters four five six they came on the show one time if you guys want to go back and check it out i'm starting to organize the um, podcast on youtube there uh you'll see different playlists but i had the um you know some of the individuals from teamsters four five six on the podcast uh maybe about a year ago to discuss the fact that they were not getting work on these developments they weren't getting work. They were protesting one of the developments on Ravine um, one time. And so that's where I actually met them. And I went there to cover it and show support, put them on the show to show support. They're getting tax breaks. They're getting pilots. They get that in order to produce jobs for local labor. But that's not happening. And so they were protesting it, right? So I had them on the show. If you're interested in that, check it out. Um, let's see what else Mike uh, uh, Spano has to say here. Uh, I don't know about this job thing, though. Um, you know, I'm still I'm still it, waiting for that. Um, it means jobs. It means revenues. Um, it, it also uh, helps your reputation because there's a residual benefit to your reputation that will help you grow in so many other ways. And so uh, at the end, end of this process we're looking at um probably 22 to 25 uh, new studios wow. uh, two of those studios are going to be forty thousand square feet wow. that'll be the largest studios on the eastern seaboard um we're talking thirteen thousand jobs uh with conservatively speaking we're talking um all now remember, so if people are coming here and there's 13,000 jobs available here, well, they're going to live here in our housing. Mm -hmm. They're going to shop here in our stores. Um, they're going to um, pay an income tax. So those taxes um, are revenues to the tax for, for our budget. Sure. And, uh, and so when we, when we can expand our, you know, our, our revenues, we don't have to raise taxes. So we want to expand the number of people who are coming here, who are working here, and who are, you know, who are paying uh, their own taxes. That, that really gives us the opportunity to not to raise taxes on everyone else. And so we're, it, it's great. And Yonkers will become synonymous with another industry, kind of like, uh, you know, Yonkers was known for Otis Elevator for the longest time. Right. All right, the largest elevator company in the entire world. And Yonkers was known in the Alexander Smith Carpet Company, uh, the largest carpet company in the entire world. Wow. And uh, right up until the Second World War. And, you know, they employed 7,000 people in the city of Yonkers. And, and their factory is still there. It's a historical landmark. We have it. And we're filling it up with, with you know, new starter businesses. And it's getting, you know, it's becoming even a greater success. Yep. Alexander Smith Carpet Mill. That's right. I actually had a recording studio in there uh, many years ago, back when I was uh, doing the music thing. And uh, it employed a lot of people. That was back when Yonkers wasn't already overpopulated, when it really wasn't much here, and they were just developing it. So we needed people to come. But now we don't need people to come we need jobs. We need opportunities to come here. Yes, we need revenues, but we're not going to be here, right? Most people are not going to be here to enjoy that revenue as a flock of new people, a wave of new people come in. As he said, there's going to be 13,000 jobs, 22 to 25 new studios, movie studios, not recording studios, not, you know, those are small big movie studios two of them will be forty thousand square feet the largest on the eastern seaboard hollywood on the hudson yonkers where's that all gonna fit where's that all gonna go there's gonna be a massive amount of people traveling throughout the city of yonkers with filming with the studios very active city and you're talking about another thousand people. And he said to himself, we're going to have 13,000 new jobs. So 13, you know, people are going to be coming in for those jobs. So they're going to live here. So he didn't even say the people here were going to get those 13,000 jobs. He said people are going to come in to, to work those 13,000 jobs. So they're going to come to live here. <laughs> and then they're going to shop here. So, uh, and, and, you know, and, and I guess whatever other services they need. So if you have a business, you're good. If you don't have a job, you know, 
you're not getting one of these jobs. You're going to have to leave, right? The rents are going up. These residentials that they are building are for these, you know, people that are coming in. This workforce from the movie studio, from the movie industry. This has been planned with people with lots of money, way above our income grade or our pay grade, right? Very rich people have colluded. There's a fact, too. Change Yonkers up and make it this Hollywood under Hudson. And so uh, that's what we're going to be seeing here in the next 10 years, just more construction of more luxury residentials and more movie studios. But I like how he says it, 13,000 jobs. So all these people are going to come in to do those jobs and they're going to live here, not the people here. They're not going to get the jobs. <laughs> that's funny, right? I told you, see, Mike Spano said it himself. Uh, the effing devil as we speak, who the hell come for criminals? Ah, listen, it's going to be a lot of people from the movie industry because, again, they're not going to be doing a whole lot of training and hiring people. They got schedules to keep. They got movies to make, shows to make. They have people that are already trained, already in the industry, already in the union because there's a whole separate union for that that are going to come here. That's why they're building so many of these rentals. And he says that, you know, that's going to bring in revenue. Yes, it's going to bring in sales tax. It's going to bring income tax for the new jobs, but not so much uh, uh, in terms of property taxes, right? I mean, sure, you know, these developments will pay property taxes, but a lot of them are getting tax breaks. And the majority of the people coming in that are going to be utilizing all of the resources, you know, uh, the utilities and, and all the infrastructure here in Yonkers are the people that are coming in that are going to be renting these luxury rentals and not paying property tax, which is what we need for our schools and stuff like that, right? Uh, roads and all that stuff. So that may not see much of an increase, but yes, yeah, sales tax, income tax, we'll see that. But how will that money be managed? That's another thing, right? We get money now. It's just a matter of how is it managed? And again, an increase in people, an increase in these movie studios, Mike Spano uh, imagines that we will not have an increase in expenses. So yeah, we'll get all this revenue, but our costs will not go up. Is that what he's saying? I would imagine that all that stuff coming in here, we're going to have an increased cost, right? We're going to have to hire more firemen. We're going to have to hire more police officers, more first responders in general, more DPW crews to clean up all this filming stuff that's going to be going on. Right? There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of things going on. So absolutely, uh, Mike Spanner, we will have to increase the spending, that this, you know, the city spending expenses and training firemen to now start fighting fires in 40-story buildings something that they have not done and they're not used to. So they're going to have to hire uh, more firefighters, train them to do these, you know, high rise, uh, you know, uh, rescue exercises, uh, you know, missions or whatever you call it. They're going to have to buy probably more equipment. We're going to need more uh, firehouses, I would imagine, more police station, maybe another one. We need more schools, although, you know, seem to be getting a lot of families here, right? So, I mean, there's definitely going to be an increase in the cost. And, the, you know, there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, renovations and repairs that are going to need to be done by the city to the roads and the overall infrastructure to handle this volume of people and new buildings that are going to be coming here to City of Yonkers. 22 to 25 movie studios. That's a lot. That's crazy. So, again, he says jobs, revenues, but he, the jobs, I don't know. He says the people are coming in to get these jobs. To, they're not the people here, right? I don't know. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, folks, he says uh, we're going to be, you know, known for another industry like the elevator company. There was another place uh, that they did this to in the South. It was called the Hollywood of the South. Oh, how original. Hollywood of the South. Uh, Pineville, Georgia. They built studios. They went in there, started building luxury rentals. They pushed a lot of the people out. You know, it was a small town. Uh, so I'd imagine they got pushed out quick. And then after a while, they abandoned it, right? They, they used it up for I don't know how many years they wanted to use it up. And then they went and moved somewhere else. So I'm also concerned with the future. Will one day Lionsgate and all these, you know, movie people up and leave and say, okay, we're done with Yonkers. We're going to Arizona. Or we're going to Wisconsin for whatever reason, right? It's just better there. We don't have to pay this over there. We're paying it here. And what's going to become of these movie studios, right? That's kind of, that happened in this, in Georgia. They just have these studios, right? So they're trying to repurpose them somehow now, right? So you know, we have to think ahead also. Um, most of the workers are local one. They will just take the train up from the city. You know what I mean? Now, that's what it's all about. Not going to happen. People are flocking to Republican states. Yeah, that's what's happening. Hollywood-themed gentrification. No sweat, Mayor Mike. Just got to displace several thousand Black and Hispanic people on the waterfront. And, and also white people. I mean, 
you know, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, forget about the people at Watergrant Street. You know, their building is being threatened, right? They they want property. They're threatening that I don't know how to say that that Sarah Lawrence facility over there. And I drove by there earlier today and I saw it and it just looks just so like, a you know, this small building dwarfed by these towers that are going up, these high rise, you know, buildings that are going up around it. It's almost like, get out the way. We want you, right? It's really like they're looking down on this little poor little building there that they're trying to hang on to. And, you know, they're using the county now to get at them and give them these ridiculous demands so the developers could just take it. That's what they've done here to people, folks. Make no mistakes about it. 13,000 jobs are an ish. Torso, uh, 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 your amount of people. Uh, they will never survive in Yonkers, period. Who's that? The movie people? M Mickey McCheese has to complete complete uh, with Georgia movie theaters. They can never compete with us cost-wise. Watch the taxes burn Yonkers. They are still here and growing, Freddie. I didn't don't know where you get. No, I'm going to. Uh, uh, it's There's several places in Georgia. Uh, but I'm gonna, is it Pineville you're talking about? I'm going to show you. I had I read the article. I said they they up and left after a while. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna um, build 22 movie studios and also excuse me, I'm I'm hitting the wrong thing. I'm going to hit this and also a school. Right, uh, one of the things he talks about. No, Doraville. I'm talking about Pineville. Doraville. That's another place. Doraville. Is that Pineville? Is that the play, same place? Uh, um, Pine something. Anyway, but uh, he also talks about a school that they're going to be in, the Yonkers Public School and Lionsgate, right? And this is a like a magnet school where the kids are going to go there and learn about film. Um, you know, there's going to be 300 students. Um, they're going to be, you know, giving um, training and, you know, all kinds of stuff to have to do with movie production, maybe some acting and stuff, you know, and they have the possibility of going to work in the movie industry, you know, instead of going to college, I guess, or, you know, maybe they can go to college. Syracuse is also going to have a satellite campus there. This is what he's talking about, what is supposedly being planned for the old Leak and Watts property over there, just um, on the border of the Bronx and uh, the, and a Yonkers there, Valentine over there. And so, uh, you know, that's a possibility. But he doesn't talk about that when he says, you know, uh, we're building two schools. Why didn't he say that, right? He always says we're, we're building that one school on McLean. But he doesn't include this one. Isn't that another school that they're building also? Wouldn't that be two? You know, it's going to be with Lionsgate, I guess, and Syracuse over there and all that. But isn't it going to be a YPS school? I'm a little confused about that. Uh, so anyway, let's let's hear what he has to say about that. Than it ever was. But again, it's a city. We'll see uh, the true effect. Speaking of the effects and how it can start small and expand in unexpected areas, I was wondering if you could talk about the actual component in the agreement that you had with Lionsgate about the two new film schools for Yonkers. Yeah, we, we can talk about that. That was a really two. interesting idea. You know, uh, by the way, Mike, if you go back to my podcast from a year or so ago, that was my idea, Mike. I was saying that this is what you guys needed to do. I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> During desegregation, when Yonkers was under a dual desegregation order, um, it was a tough time for the city, uh, economically, financially, um, our, our reputation. Um, you know, certainly we all know if we live here, we're not a racist community, but uh, if you're under a dual desegregation order, um, if you're outside of Yonkers, you might have a different impression. We had a lot of work if we wanted to kind of change our image and move the city in a different direction. The reason I brought in the DSEG order was because we, we were 100% what they call magnet schools. So we had magnet schools all across the city. And that allowed us to um, teach almost specialties to kids who wanted to be in any school in the city. Right. That magnet program was wonderfully successful, but um, extremely expensive. And when the city settled its desegregation order, it kind of went by the wayside. Um, but here we have an opportunity now to bring a magnet back. And a magnet, so magnet would be a film studio school. So they're going to come up with a curriculum that they're going to be able to teach kids, sixth grade to 12th grade, about the film industry, about holding a camera, about writing scripts, about doing all the things that, that you do in that industry. Uh, and frankly, 
many of, of the young people that graduate from this school won't have to go to college. If they choose not to, they can actually go right into the industry. And that's where, that's the whole goal and the whole beauty of this thing, that they'll go right into the industry. And the industry pays very well. I mean, they are, they are very much middle class. Um, and it's a, uh, it's, if someone gets a job working for Lionsgate, uh, they're, they're gonna have a direct line to the middle class. Now, that's a great thing that we can offer our kids here. Yes, yes, it's a great thing we can offer our kids here. I'm always all for education. However, a direct line to the middle class is a great education period. It doesn't necessarily have to be a film school. And I think improving the overall quality of the school district will give everybody a direct line to the upper middle class, possibly, right? Everybody. Education is, uh, you know, one of the um, tools for upward to uh, help you move up in life, right? An upward mobility, right? And so I think that, um, you know, we should focus on the entire school district. And, you know, it's great that they're offering this program. But again, it's going to be uh, limited, right? So it's going to be uh, um, like one of these, you know, schools that everybody wants to get into, or, you know, you get three choices, that school, when it opens up, whenever it opens up, right? Uh, you know, this is just what is being told to us. And I know by now, and I hope you guys know by now that what we hear them say is not always what happens, but let's hope, right? Let's hope that this is what's actually going to happen. And we see this school open up. How many uh, uh, people are actually going to be in, uh, I'll be able to uh, enroll in this particular school? Right. It's, I think he said about 300. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be very competitive. Everyone's going to be trying to get into this school. Everybody wants to be in the film industry. Right. It's very appealing. You know, you could become a famous star, a celebrity, but it's not an easy industry to get into for anyone. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, what uh, uh, connections you have, like with you know, school you go to. There's so many people trying to get into this industry. Right. And so that's a great to offer. But here's another thing, and I'm just going to put it out there because I hope they do it, regardless if I'm the one that gets to implement it or not. Mayor Spano, why don't you also do, because parents are asking for these uh, trade schools, right, and, uh, and magnet type schools, also do schools where they have a direct line to one of the departments here in the city, right? Something more realistic, more attainable, more achievable that also makes a good salary. That's also a direct line to the middle class. Our employees, or not our, but the city employees make good money here in the city of Yonkers, right? So imagine if you had these programs in the high schools where kids can learn how to be, you know, all about firefighting, uh, police officer, law enforcement, right? The goal is that once they graduate, they are, you know, ahead of ready for the police department, for the fire department, for DPW, you want to work in sanitation, you know, right? They, 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 they do testing in the schools already to place them already, put them on a path. All right. You're on this track to become a fireman. You're on track to become a police officer. You're on track to become, uh, you know, DPW, sanitation, uh, whatever, you know, send them out for, uh, uh, you know, one of the days out of the week with the guys out there while they're at work so they could start learning that stuff. You want to work in the school? You want to be a teacher? Well, hey, one day a week, you're going to go into one of the schools and work alongside a, a, a teacher and follow along that person. Right. Or, or another classroom. These things that they are more attainable, that are more realistic, that are more achievable, that are also great careers, that also give them great pay. That's to be done now. We don't have to wait for Lionsgate. We don't have to wait for Syracuse. We don't have to wait for construction. We can do that now. We can implement that in the schools next year. And imagine that. Kids who say, you know what? College is not for me, but I would love to, you know, be a firefighter. They can get some, you know, I believe police officers, you have to have some college credits. So they can get that in high school, right? So they don't have to, you know, necessarily go to college after high school, try to get those credits. It's all going to be right when you graduate. You have X amount of credits already. It's like a, a program. And I've seen this done in other schools, high schools, where kids that graduate high school with X amount of college credits already, you know, giving them a head start. So this could be something that they could implement. You want to be a police officer? Here you go. You're more interested in being, uh, you know, um, uh, working in DPW. Here you go. You want to be a teacher? Well, you have to get a degree. You have to get a master's. But hey, we have a, a, a program that'll help you uh, get there sooner, that'll get you on that track sooner, and then also get you on track to become a teacher here in Yonkers. 
right? So you're a Yonkers student, you're a Yonkers native, you grow up here, you go to school here, you graduate here, and then you go to work here, and then you stay here. That's how we build our community. We don't push the people out and bring all these new people in and then sell it to us like it's going to be great for the people you're pushing out. That doesn't make sense, right? That doesn't make sense. This stuff is not for most people here, but it's being sold to them like it's great. This is what we need to do. And yes, we could do this movie thing too, is great also. But folks, the movie industry is very tough to get into. It doesn't matter that they'll have this connection with Lionsgate. It's going to be so competitive. It's very competitive. I know people that work in it, right? I know people, again, I graduated high school with people, movie executives, Marvel Studios. They produce um, Captain America and uh, Iron Man series, right? Yeah, they produce these movies. Right? And then I also know people that also do production stuff that started out, you know, one of the guys in the cars with the cones on top of the cars and they watch the spaces, you know, for so they can clear out, you know, any, all the parking spaces so no one will park. Well, he started out doing that. He moved up to different, you know, positions within the production thing. But he said it himself, it's difficult, it's very competitive. And it's all about who you know. He said, you, that's really the biggest thing he said. He said, really, it's about who you know. OK, so if you know somebody, that's most likely why you will advance in the movie. And I'm not trying to knock it. I just want people to be realistic as somebody who wanted to be in the music industry. Right. I want to be right. And, and I worked hard to do that. But, you know, that's a tough industry. It's a lot of people is very oversaturated. So I would like them to see them focus on more, you know, attainable goals, more realistic stuff. You know, jobs with the city. Let's get kids who are not going to go off to college. College is not for them. Let's get them on track to work in one of the departments here in the city of Yonkers. We could start that program right away. And I've been saying that for a while. So that's that's a dope program I like to see. Let's see what else he has to say before I get up out of here. And they came back to me with this wonderful proposal where we will have as many as 600 young. FDNY has a cadet program where kids end up getting a job once they're uh, of age and finish the program. Yeah, that's what we should do here with the YFD and the YPD, right? And I also heard, somebody told me this, that you the um, you can take the test, the civil service test as young as 16, right? Um, and then, you know, I guess when you turn 17 or something like that, you can start to get some of the certain jobs, but I hear you can take it early and at least you can practice. And someone told me that there was someone as young as 12 taking it just for practice. Because when they become of age, they want to go ahead and, you know, be ready for it. So, you know, there's parents out there, there's families out there, and I'm sure because they're connected and they're in the know, because most of us don't know, and this is why I'm putting it out there for you parents, right? They're putting their kids to take these civil service tests early so they can, you know, uh, um, practice and they can get the best score possible. So if you have a child that's going to be interested, maybe consider it. You can, I heard there was a 12 year old taking it just for practice, but you can take it um, for real officially, I think as young as 16 here in Yonkers. So don't miss that opportunity, folks. I know they don't promote that. Certain people only are the ones that are, you know, knowing about it. So I'm promoting it out there, right? Make sure we all take advantage of the opportunities that they, that exist here in the city of Yonkers. Young people who can come from anywhere they want in the city, choose space, provided we have the space, to be a part of this magnet program. Provided we have the space. Uh, and, and be a part of this booming business that we have here at, in Yonkers. Picture the, the site. So it's a 28-acre site. Uh, there will be probably 14 or so additional movie studios on the same 28-acre site. Wow. And in the middle of this 28-acre site, overlooking the Hudson River, will be, um, will be the new high school. And that new high school, um, young people are going to go to school every day. They're going to learn, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, <laughs> but they're also going to learn about this industry. And, and they're going to be able to have hands-on. Think about this. There's going to, they're going to build a studio and attach it to the school. So our kids will be working in the studio. Our kids will be driving through a maze of things that are happening where there are famous actors and actresses that are walking around them and amongst them. How cool is that going to be? So we're looking forward to that. Congratulations. It's amazing. How many people believe that? How many people believe that? I, I, I want to know. I truly want to know. 
I don't want to be negative. How many people believe that? that our kids are going to be walking among movie, stu- movie stars, right? While they go to school. Picture that, right? It's going to be the high school. It's going to overlook the Hudson River. And kids are going to be going there to go to school. And they're going to be going there to do work. And they're going to actually attach a studio to the high school. And so the kids could actually work in the studio, right? I don't know. How many people actually believe that? You know, you know what makes me not believe it all the way? Or maybe that this is just an idea. Like, it's not, it's not really materialized further than a thought, than an idea. Because he hasn't, he didn't give any real details, right? He didn't give any details at all. Just said um, that they're going to be, you know, attaching a high school to a movie studio. It's going to overlook the Hudson and kids are going to go there to do work. Right? And then they're also going to learn uh, hands-on, and then they're going to walk, you know, amongst movie stars. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily, I don't know if I believe, you know, it just doesn't sound real. It sounds like it's being sold to us. Like it's just an idea that they have, then they're tossed around, but there's no real, you know, energy being put into it. There's no real steps being taken to make it happen. Sure, Lionsgate has purchased Joe Cotter, has purchased the old Leak and Was property, right? And yes, Lionsgate plans on uh, building more studios there, as he said, about 14 of them right there on that lot alone. And yes, Syracuse uh, plans on building a satellite campus for their students. But I don't know about, about the young public school students. I know that they're looking to transform the PAL into some kind of film thing, because honestly, Lionsgate has taken that as well. I don't think, you know, they really want people to in the city of Yonkers to know, but the, the PAL is going. I, I don't think they're going to knock it down, but it's they, they've taken that over. They've taken that whole strip down Warburton right across from the, the Department of Social Services. Right across, they got those houses, gave the guy half a million dollars for a property that was worth at least $800,000, gave him half the money up front and uh, mortgaged the rest. Took advantage of this dude. Went from living in a house with a decent piece of, a decent lot to living in an apartment on Elm Street. That's what Lionsgate did to this Hispanic man. Just saying, that's a true story, right? He's not lying. I used to see DMX when I was working all the time. <laughs> reading writing and arrhythmia yeah absolutely you know that's what we need to focus on you know i don't hear much talk about what we're going to do about these old dilapidated buildings you know we're talking about this one school that to me sounds just like a thought that he's had he's tossing around he's trying to throw it out there to make people excited get parents all excited about this yeah let's vote for mike he's going to get this school my child is going to be a star playing with people's emotions, playing with people's hopes. That's all I think it is. You know, let's start with the basics. And the fact that he's not starting there to me says that this is all BS. Start with the basics. We have that school on McLean. What's going on with that? Can we get an estimated, you know, time of completion? Uh, we know it's gone over budget. Will it go over time, right? You know, what do we, what should we expect from that? You know, what's going to be in that school? You know, where is that? We don't hear nothing about that. We always hear everything about Lionsgate, the developers, AMS, luxury residential, developers, Lionsgate, Joe Cotter, AMS. That's all we hear about. Let's start with the basics. Our schools are over 80 years old on average or more. The oldest being 136 years old. Let's fix those schools. Let's fix the overall quality of the school district. Let's add real sports program. Did you folks see this commercial? I saw it the other day. Uh, I was watching, uh, I just decided to watch basketball this weekend because I said, I'm not gonna think about politics. And so when I don't wanna think about work or politics or anything like that, I turn on the TV because it just, it's like, you know, nothing, right? It's like just a bunch of nothing that you're thinking about. And it's just frees my mind. And I just like, all right. And I see this commercial as I'm watching, I think it's a Golden State Warriors game. And uh, it, it talks about sports and it shows kids engaging in sports. And it gives a bunch of different reasons why sports is important, right? It builds teamwork. You know, it talks about the coach, about the teammates, socialization, how it helps kids fit in, you know, bring them into a group, depending on what sport they like. 
gives them scholarships, it gives them educational, academic opportunities, helps them pay for college. Many kids who can, you know, whose parents can main, cannot afford it and, and don't want to have to take out these crazy loans, but are, you know, at very athletic and do well in sports, go get a scholarship. My wife got a presidential scholarship, a full presidential scholarship. She got a full ride, free uh, college. She ended, she didn't end up finishing. She only did one year there. She actually gave up a full academic scholarship because she didn't like the school and ended up going uh, somewhere else, but she got it. And so many people I know not only got academic scholarships, but got uh, scholarships for sports to division one schools, big schools. Right. And also, you know, the smaller schools as well. A lot of kids got scholarships to a lot of smaller colleges and universities. And that helped pay for their college that paid for their college. So and that gave them opportunities. Some of them, you know, a lot of men have gone to the NFL or NBA or whatever. But, you know, they became coaches in college, coaches at high schools. You know, it just does so much. And that's what we need to see. And hear and just have done. You know, this is great, but this is all talk. This is all sales to me. It's all about trying to get you to want to make sure that we keep the same administration going because he's got to finish the job that he started. Actually, Albany started. And maybe former mayor of Mount Vernon, Richard Thomas, started. And the mayor is just, you know, inherited this opportunity. And they'll say, hey, you take all the glory, take all the credit. This is what we want to do. The rich people came. They donated a lot of money. Kathy Hoko's in there. Now she's got to, you know, return the favor. And that's what's happening here. So screw the people Yonkers, because at the end of the day, the people making the decisions for Yonkers are not from Yonkers. And they don't care about Yonkers. And they don't care about you. And this is why it's so important that we come out and we vote for change this year. But as I'm learning in these elections, and as been, I've been speaking with other individuals, there's a lot of funny business going on with these elections. It's a lot of funny business going on with politics in general here in the city of Yonkers, which makes it nearly impossible for anyone to take out the administration. And it doesn't have to do with money. It doesn't have to do with people wanting to vote for you or sign your petition. It has to do with a system that has been rigged for a very long time now. And how do we unrig that system? We do it by discussing it, and eventually we will come up with the solution, folks. Freddie, did you get the videos I sent you uh, about the smart cities and 15-minute cities? Uh, I have to check, but, um, uh, you know, I've been hearing a lot about that. You know, that goes over people's heads, and they don't realize how it's all connected. Uh, but, you know, it's too much. New Gorn High slated for two, 2037. Yeah. <laughs> They can't fix or build the schools. They use the funds in an inverse order, salaries through the roof and the pension system. Look at the cost of the pension fund and you'll have to do it is take this to civil court on misappropriation of taxpayer funds. And what Pete means by that is that, you know, a lot of the revenue, right? The mayor says we want to bring this in because this is going to generate more revenue for the city. This is great. That means your taxes are not going to go up, but that's all fluff. That's all fluff. That's not true. More revenue does not equate to, you know, uh, uh, taxes remaining stagnant or, or remaining the same, right? There's no correlation there, right? There's none. You know, he hasn't made any, right? So, you know, the money that we get now is pretty good. It's just that it's mismanaged. Most of it, and I don't want to say, you know, people say mismanaged, you're paying salaries, but most of it goes to salaries, right? And you have to think about this as a business person, right? If you are a business owner, do you want to pay most of your money that you get in into your salaries to the point where you can't do anything else. You're, you're relying on, you know, funding from a business loan from the bank constantly out uh, the bank needs to give me more money to keep me afloat. I need to keep this capital, right? I have to keep that line of credit open in order to stay afloat. That's basically what the city of Yonkers, how it's operated, how they're running it. Right. And the state is the bank yet. The state is saying, we're not giving you any more money. You have to manage your money right. And one of the complaints that the state makes is the money they spend on overtime, the amount of money that they go over on overtime by four to five million dollars for each department damn near. Right. And so that impacts, you know, the city as a whole. 
and not to knock people that work for the city because I'm not against you guys. I'm just trying to give, you know, quick, you know, you know, business lesson here, right? You obviously have to cut it down. If you're, if that's your situation as a business owner, you're going to say, okay, either, you know, uh, I'm going to have to lay off some employees. Or I'm going to have to reduce salaries. You know, I can't pay people as much, right? Because I want to make money. I want to make a profit. I want to grow my business. I want to expand. I want to open up another location. But if I'm spending all my money on paying the people that work for me, then what's the point, right? So that's the problem here. So about 60 to 70%, and Corazon Pineda Isaac knows this very well. The councilwoman from District 2 is letting everyone know privately. Hush, 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 hush. She is going around privately letting people know, showing them the list of Spanos that work for the city. She's saying there's quite a lot, and I've heard this, there's quite a lot, and she has the list, and she will show you and tell you exactly how much taxpayer money the entire Spano family is bringing home every year. That must be part of her campaign strategy. But it's a fact that should be made public. Why has the councilwoman not done so herself? I don't know. I guess Freddie and Vasquez will have to do that too. Because I'm usually having to do their jobs, right? And a lot of things that have been happening here in the city of Yonkers, folks, you have to see that Freddie Vasquez is talking about it. Then it's getting done. So who's actually getting things done? I've already am working for you folks as the actual mayor, getting things done, maybe not officially, but I speak about it and they move. And just like this Syracuse idea, that's actually an idea I was throwing out there about a year or so ago. And I was saying, well, all this movie studio, why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Why don't they do a film school with the public schools? I even told Lakeisha Collins Bellamy, city council president, this. We had a conversation about it, among other things. But I don't care as long as they actually do it. I don't know if they're going to actually do this. I hope so. I hope they're just not selling us a dream to get us just to go along with it. But folks, you know, politics here in the city of Yonkers is um, not fair. It's very rough. It's very corrupt. And uh, unfortunately, you know, unless you set up a, a, a this real super powerful structure, you know, machine, you're not going to beat this uh, current administration, you're not gonna take this out. And I'm learning that. And so what I want folks to understand is that I'm learning. To me, this is school. I'm in school right now. I'm going through college or whatever. I'm going to, to school of politics here in Yonkers and I'm learning how they do it. And my goal is not to necessarily have the state come and investigate election, state of you know New York State Board of Elections, come and investigate this. If they want to, they great. If they do their job, great. We would love to see them do their job. Wouldn't we, folks? Are they going to do their job? Hmm, I don't know. I wouldn't bet on it. But at the very least, we can discuss it. I will let you guys know what's going on. I think it's only right that you should know. So I'll speak about it on my podcast. I'll let anyone who's willing to listen know what's going on. But more importantly, I will learn. And when I learn, then I will put my system into place and I will come much stronger next time. So that's the way I look at it. I'm learning this system. It's very, hmm, very, it's not fair. Let's just say that. It's not fair at all. But we're going to learn and we're going to take over eventually. Maybe not this time. But in four years, I promise you, if I'm not running my daycare centers, if I don't have two, three daycare centers that I'm completely busy with in four years, I will make a strong run for mayor of the city of Yonkers. You better believe that. And I will focus on the next four years on doing just that. I will know exactly what they're going to do how they're going to do it. And I'll set my whole system in place and I'm going to give them a hell of a run. That's for sure. So I don't, you know, some people say, Freddie, you know, you know, this is good. Listen, it, uh, I'm winning because I'm learning, right? I'm winning because I'm learning. And so 
That's a plus to me. Freddie, my taxes were 3000 in New York. It would be 15000 I turned 62 last year. My school taxes come off that over 2000 Our state taxes have a surplus of $6 billion. Kemp is giving bonuses to teachers, police, fire, property tax, and another stimuli pay, uh, uh, payout, 500 Nice. You know, I don't want to talk too much about my business, but because I, because I, they always watching, you know, and I try to, I, I, you know, from day one, I just always stay, you know, pretty much private, you know. Um, so even everything I do is kind of private. I don't attach um, my name to a lot of things. Just, you know, and that's not nothing illegal. It's not, it's not done illegally, right? You know, it's you could do things like that legally. Uh, but just know that, you know, um, you know where where, you know, we have a property, uh, you know. A, a six thousand square feet home, right? Not even three thousand a year in taxes. I'm, I'm lying. I'm lying. Maybe a little over three thousand now, but it, it, in the beginning, right? It was it, first per the the home, first year. <laughs> I'm trying to like say uh, without saying too. I, these people watch everything. They watch everything I do. And in fact, I want to show you something here. They they watch everything I do. They definitely um see what I'm saying. Try to get information that way. You know, I told my wife, I said, please just watch what you post on your page, honey. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, these people are still on us like this. But I get it. I'm, I'm doing this podcast. They don't like it, um, you know. But, uh, you know, they're, they're very nasty and dirty here. They're using this guy, uh, Brian Harris. So they watch my page, everything. Look at this. Look at this. Everything I do. Right. This is Dell. You know, you know what's sad about this guy is that this guy Dell, I try to help him out. The guy, he's he's you know Dell. I don't know if you know Dell. Dell is um uh, 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 an individual. I'm not sure how old he is, but um you know it's it's obvious that he may you know uh have uh, uh some health mental health. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to say without be. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to say how how to say it without being mean. But Dell obviously had to you know anyway, and so. He is manipulated, and I feel bad because they take advantage of this guy. He doesn't know any better. I mean, Dell would come into my office, and I'd pay him. I really was just doing it to just because I didn't need him to share my my podcast. And he, you know, and now I guess they they saw that he was sharing my podcast, so they must have reached out to him and they said, "Hey, we'll pay you more money." Uh, you know, which wasn't a lot of money the guy wanted. He wanted only $30 a month, this guy. Dell, right? So he can share it on his um, page, Yonkers Insider or whatever. And so I, I, I give him 50 bucks a time, right? Here you go. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's not a lot big, a lot more, but, you know, whatever. And he wasn't even always sharing all my podcasts. And I said, Dell, you got to share all of them, right? But uh, apparently they got to him. They didn't like it. He even told me, he said, uh, you know, uh, Brian called me and said, well, Dell, why are you sharing Freddie Vasquez's stuff? These people, this is Yonkers. This, you know, I wouldn't mention it if it wasn't a part of politics. This is a part of politics. You have to believe me when I tell you that these individuals are guided by our city clerk and city clerk's office. It's a fact. And this is what they set out to do on their behalf. In fact, Dell was asked by someone, why are you doing that? And they said, it's just business. So attacking people, Dell, is just business? You make money by spreading falsehoods about people and their families. But nasty falsehoods. People that are, you know, not public uh, um, people, right? And they're not true. I mean, at, at least if they were true, at least if they had some documentation, they had they had things to support what they say. But they'll just put anything out there. I mean, from child pornography. Have I ever accused the mayor of any city council member of engaging in child pornography? No. Did I ever call uh, CPS on any of the council members or any elected officials? No. Have I ever sent anyone to any of their businesses, John Rubo's business? No. If I say John Rubo was given a better lease once AMS bought the building, well, 
That's what sources are alleging. The same way sources allege that Mike Cater was involved in quid quo pro with Smith Bus Jacobs. And that was investigated right away. City Council thought that was important enough to write a letter to Liam McLaughlin and investigate it, right? So why wouldn't I mention that about Mr. Rubo, the councilman from the 4th District? Now, I'm not saying anything about his lovely wife. I've never mentioned his wife at all, and I won't. There's no reason for me to mention his wife. He has a beautiful family, in fact. Very beautiful family. Right. And so, I, I, you know, and, and even Rennie Spano, even when I spoke to his his wife, I said, I hear you're a great mom. And I, and I meant that because I heard that. That's what people said. She's a great mom. She, she said she's all about family. I said, me, too. Right. But you, she also does work for that YIDA. She's the executive director. And they are very involved in the developments. But I've never mentioned anything bad about her in child pornography. I never said she sent Vinnie Spano child porn from her work computer, have I? No. No. In fact, I didn't mention much of her until they decided to do what they did to my business and my family and try and destroy our reputation with those false claims of CPS and that video that uh, Ruros and Brian Harrod are trying to essentially blackmail me with currently, right? Brian's going to continue to attack me unless I take down everything that I ever said about Ruros. But I don't understand why. I said, Ruros, if Brian's not your partner, why does Brian care? Oh, he's my friend. Oh, he's your friend. Okay. So basically, Rue Rose has Brian attack me on his behalf. So this is what they do. And this was put March 11th. I just got it sent to me. Freddie is trying to avoid uh, and not... Freddie Vasquez is trying to avoid and not responding to the legal demands from Zahi Jarrett for discovery. In defamation case that could put the legal assets of many Yonkers residents at serious risk once YouTube video maker starts talking under oath. I don't know what he means by that. I don't know. Uh, in defamation case that could put the legal assets of many Yonkers residents at serious risk. What is he talking about? Like, I mean, I, I, I don't make things. Folks, this is the deal with that. So he sent me, Zahi Jarris, the man that was convicted for, uh, Corruption, bribery, extortion. You know, he got a city councilwoman, majority leader, sent to jail for six years while he only got four years. Then he tried to lie and say that he was uh, giving her this money and gifts and all that because he was in love with her. That's right, because he was in love with her. Meanwhile, he's married, so his wife has to hear this uh, excuse that he's coming up with, embarrassing his wife even further. And so I spoke about it, and now he's suing me for a million dollars. <laughs> it's a joke. And so we responded to that, saying it's a joke, basically. And then he responded, his lawyer responded to that, asking for my sources. Well, my sources in regards to Zahi Jarris are Google, Vinny Spano, and Zahi Jarris himself. Whatever I didn't find on Google... I heard from Vinny and or Zahi from their own mouths. When we would go out and hang out, we'd have some beers, we'd chat. And so now he's upset because I speak about what he's told me or what I've read online. Oh, Anthony DiMaggio says he's a source also. He wants to be a source, which he, I guess in a sense he is, Right. And you know, Vinny Spano was a source. He's given me information on other people, which I have documented. And we spoke about Zahi Jarris many times, which I also have documented. So don't worry, Brian, I will be responding. But don't worry, other sources. The only sources I will give up are the ones I just gave up. Google, Zahi himself, and Vinny. 
any other source that I got anonymous. I don't even know who you guys are. Never met you. Never met you. And they're not going to get anything other than that. There's nothing to give other, anything on, on Zahi Jarrett's case. So those are my sources, Brian. There you go. I put them out there. I'm going to uh, make sure that we put it in the uh, proper, you know, format and get it over to Zahi's uh, attorney. Those are my sources. And I'm not sure what you mean by people's legal residence, legal asset, asset. Folks, don't let this guy scare you. You know what they're trying to do here? They're trying to keep people from giving me information by scaring people. Oh, many residents of Yonkers are at serious risk of uh, uh, legal assets. Could put the legal assets of many Yonkers residents at serious risk. No one's at serious risk. No one's at serious risk. So this is what they put up. And then he also talks about the mayor. Lame campaign. Mayor Mike Spano, low energy re-election efforts are unimpressive in a competitive primary season. And I believe he's being sarcastic here. But anyway, folks, I'm Freddie Vasquez. That's my episode for tonight. Brian Harrod and uh, Rue Rose. And, uh, um, and by the way, Rue Rose... I got the oh, some some uh, audio here. I want to play. I'm going to play it soon, so you can hear Ruros actually basically telling me who the source was, uh, who who gave him that video, and also pretty much admitting to uh, the fact that elected officials wanted him to write negative stories about me to hurt my business. Yeah, that audio is going to be coming soon. Don't worry about it. I'm playing chess, not checkers, from day one. Ready, win. I'm Freddie Vasquez. This is. Thank you both for watching. Uh, that's the Mike Spano new podcast, Mike Spano on Might. What do you think about it, folks? Do you believe that we will have this? film school, film high school magnet that will be just as the mayor described, overlooking the Hudson River, attached directly uh, to a movie studio where kids will go and walk amongst the stars and get jobs in the movie industry where they will have a direct path or line to the middle class. Do you believe that we'll see this school? I don't know. You tell me. What do you think? I'm Freddie Vasquez, folks. Have a beautiful uh, rest of the week. Happy Tuesday. And please, folks, do not listen to what this guy Brian Harrod posts or Rue Rose. These guys truly hate me, and I understand why. You know, I informed everybody of Rue Rose's past. Brian, I don't know why he hates me, but he does. But he gets paid to do that, folks. It's a man that lives in our municipal housing doesn't do anything but stay home all day it's paid and Dell Dell if I if I sue you I'm not gonna sue you to win I'm just gonna sue you to take you to court are you gonna want to pay an attorney to have to deal with this Dell I don't think so I ain't even gonna waste my time Del. God bless you make your 30 bucks and keep the stains off the shirt Old You're Spice. Watching basement Politics with my dad, Freddie Vasquez. Old Spice. Old Spice. You're watching Basement Politics with my dad, Freddie Vasquez. Thank you for watching Basement Politics with my husband, Freddie Vasquez. Freddie wins. Fatality.